Today we're going to discuss investing, we'll talk food for thought and book of the month, and I'll give you another decision making exercise. I am Simon the Zealot and you are watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. To begin, let's remember the philosophy of crawl, walk, run, gradually progressing from basics to proficiency. So far in the series on personal finance, we've talked largely about economizing your resources, that is, how to have less money leave your hands. We started with crawling and transitioned to walking. Today, we're going to run by looking at how to put your money to work so that you're receiving income from sources other than a paycheck. This additional income will then help you achieve the bigger goals that you have set for your life, which is the ultimate goal of personal finance. From my first video in the series, I defined investment as surrendering money for the potential to receive more money in return. George Klassen gives us the illustration of thinking about your money as livestock. Your dollars go out and breed and birth nickels, which then grow into dollars and do the same. Over time, this will cause you to have a substantial financial herd. Another way of illustrating investing is brought to us courtesy of Kevin O'Leary. Wow. Stop right there. Okay. I'm going to do you a huge favor. Here's how I think of my money. Soldiers. I send them out to war every day. I want them to take prisoners and come home. So there's more of them. Your army, every soldier dies that you send out every day. When you have no soldiers, you're wiped out. That's the game of life. Stop this madness. Part of what I have to do every day is to, is to try and find opportunities where I put money in harm's way right. and I get a return. I don't pick places where there are thousands of dead and rotting corpses. That's what the beverage industry is. It's guys like you getting slaughtered. And look, I don't want to depress you or not give you the motivation you need. Who are you kidding? I think it's fraught with risk. I'm out. With this illustration in mind, you can treat investment operations like combat operations, keeping in mind the two R's of investing, risk and reward. Risk is exposing your money to loss, and reward is the payoff for taking that risk. Generally speaking, there's a correlation between the two. The higher the risk, the higher the return. However, sometimes risk is less about the investment and more about the investor making uninformed decisions. So you really have to be a critical and rational thinker if you're going to expose your money to the risk of being lost. You cannot be whimsical, careless, or romantic in investment unless you enjoy taking losses. At OCS and TBS, you'll be taught about compiling an estimation of the situation as part of the planning process for prosecuting a mission. The estimation of the situation uses the acronym METC. The M stands for mission, the E stands for enemy, the first T stands for troops and fire support, the second T stands for terrain and weather, the third T stands for time, space, and logistics, and the C stands for civil considerations. Now, when you are ready to invest, you can also use METTC to plan your investing strategy and to determine how to leverage the circumstances and your resources so that the battle is in your favor. Let's talk about what that looks like. First, let's look at mission. In general, the mission of investing is using your money to capture more money in order to secure your basic needs and fund your larger goals as well. If there are any other task and purpose type questions that need to be answered with whatever investment that you're looking at making, those questions need to be included in this section. Enemy. In investing, the enemy is represented by the risk of loss to your investment. You have to ask yourself what kind of opposition your money will meet in the particular battle space that you're considering. Obviously, you wouldn't send your men into an ambush, and so you don't want to send your money into an ambush either. 
unless you know specifically how to turn that ambush into a counter ambush to your advantage. Troops and fire support. This is where you determine the type and amount of your resources and the resources, not your own, that you can call on. How much money can you or should you commit to the fight? What other assets do you have? Who can help you with the mission? For starters, investing for you might just be with the money that you have saved up. At more advanced levels, it could involve other assets and investing partners. Terrain and weather. Here you would consider the arena or atmosphere that you're putting your money into. Is it highly volatile? Hard to traverse? How is the visibility? These are the type of questions that you would ask before investing. Time, space, logistics. Here you would consider how long you need to commit your money for to consider the mission a success and how easy it is to extract if things get dicey. Civil considerations. This is where you consider your ethical factors. Is everything that you're doing above board? What would the general public think of your actions? If you go through the proper planning process, you can be more confident with sending your money out on missions. Money loves a good commander and will work twice as hard to accomplish the mission if you set it up for success. To wrap this up, consider these last few points. First, don't proceed without a plan. Sending your money out on missions without a plan is just asking for casualties. Second, don't plan alone. Surround yourself with experienced, knowledgeable, and active advisors who can offer you guidance. Third, don't be greedy. If something looks too good to be true, it probably is. Only Bernie Madoff can get you a 40% return on investment. Fourth, don't overcommit. Personal finance is a fight on many fronts, so you don't want to leave any posts unmanned. Finally, nothing is a guarantee. You could have the best plan and still have things go wrong. Always keep that in mind if or when you decide to enter investment operations. You may determine that it's best to just keep everyone at home. I read you, sir. The book of the month for March is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Kiyosaki is a controversial figure in the personal finance world, but he offers a contrarian viewpoint that will expand the boundaries of your thinking on personal finance. Remember, we play in the gray. It doesn't have to be pure gold to be valuable. Consider and use the things you find worthwhile and use the rest to sharpen your thinking. The PDF of the book is on the drive and the link is below. Something on your mind? Today's food for thought is as follows. There's no such thing as a free lunch. What this means is that everything of value costs somebody something. And to get that something from its source to its use takes resources that someone has to provide. Think about getting treated to a free lunch. Sure, that lunch is free for you, but it's not free to the person who is paying for you. And if the restaurant is paying for the meal, it's not free to them because they had to buy the food and pay the utilities and labor costs that produce that meal. You can work this thought process all the way back through the chain to the source. At some level, somebody is going to have to expend resources for a particular thing to be provided. Make up your mind. Finally, today's decision-making exercise is as follows. You are the platoon commander for first platoon. It is standard operating procedure in your company to award a 72-hour liberty period. That's an extra day off on the weekends. To platoons that go 30 days with no disciplinary problems. Returning from a lengthy field exercise, your platoon has reached 28 days without any such problems. The following day, a Marine goes UA, that's unauthorized absence, in the morning, but shows up later that day. No one outside the platoon knew about his absence, so your company will grant the 72-hour liberty if you don't make the company commander aware of the UA. Do you ignore the UA and ensure your Marines go on a well-earned liberty, or do you report the UA and make the entire platoon suffer 
sacrificing the liberty, and hurting morale? Let me know in the comment section below. So that's it for today's show. As usual, any comments, questions, requests, or suggestions, let me know. And as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer.